What's up, everybody? It's Greg with Delta, and this is the Be The Difference podcast. This podcast is all about making you a better person in your life and in your business with coaching on sales, leadership, mindset, marketing, everything under the sun when it comes to being an entrepreneur, and we bring on guest speakers. Today, I've got the honor and pleasure of welcoming Miss Nancy Erickson to the podcast. Nancy, how are you doing? I'm doing very well. Thank you, Greg. You're very welcome. It's a pleasure to have you here, Nancy, and to be a part of the podcast. For for those of you that don't know Nancy, Nancy Erickson, the book professor, coaches business professionals to become authors of high-impact nonfiction books that will establish them as experts in their fields, increase their credibility, help attract a following, and expand their business. When the book is finished, you can take each chapter and repurpose it to create other revenue producing products that include seminars, workshops, online training, podcasts, and online courses. Nancy Erickson is the owner of two book related businesses, the book professor and Stonebrook publishing an award winning nonfiction publishing house. In 2022, she was named a top 10 book coach in the U S by coach federation. Nancy, this is gonna be a great conversation. I love it. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. So um, I I recently was like, you know, I'm going to write a book because I wanted to start getting on stage and speaking and I started doing stage speaking. And so in it, this was actually in the end of 2021. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to write a book. And uh, in all of November, I spent um, it's like two hours a day I forced myself. So I'm going to write two hours a day. And I wrote about 1500 words a day. And uh, I got done and I, I finished it. I, I want to go back and actually edit more because I, I'm sitting at like now I'm sitting at about 35,000 words. You're book. still sitting on it. I'm still sitting on it. I haven't published oh, it. Greg. <laughs> I haven't we got to get that out, out to the world, get your brilliance out there beyond your podcast. So I know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, I, well, so I talked to some publishers. It was all, the, it was all like the done for you um, sure. services. And so I was like, mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. And, I was like, well, what if I can't market it well? What if it doesn't sell? And then I was like, well, what if I could do like a bigger publisher that, you know, so I looked at that and um, it was actually expensive coming in because they're like, hey, we got to pay for professional editing. Yeah. And uh, we got to get edited and we're going to, we're going to edit it, basically make it like where it's sticky, where it's, it it reads really well. And it's a page turn, right? And so um, I was like, well, I don't, I, I had the money, but I was like, but there's other things I'm trying to do. And I was like, Oh, yeah. I don't know yet. And yeah. so yeah. I just, I put a hiatus on it. And so well, I have, I've been sitting on it for months now. Well, I'm glad you didn't publish it without editing it first. Cause that's one of the most important steps is that, you know, every great writer has an incredible editor that really makes everything just come together and shine. So um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, writing the book is, I, they say like 85% of people think about writing a book, but when you actually sit down to do it, it's harder than you think. And yeah. the problem is because you don't know, you know, I mean, how would you know how to do it if you never had before? So even starting, I'm, I'm really impressed with your schedule, two hours a day and the word count that you established. And you are obviously a disciplined man. I mean, I can look <laughs> at you and tell that. And yeah, that I you did. That you do what you say to yourself you're going to do. And many people don't honor those promises and need a lot of um, coaching and accountability in order to achieve things. Cause it's a, it's a long-term project. It's not like writing a blog post or an article or anything like that. It's yeah. similar. I mean, you're very invested in your podcast and you do lots of recordings and you've been hitting it hard for a sustained period of time. That's what writing a book is like, except writing a book, it, it gets over. You finish <laughs> when you're podcasting, you're going on in per- to perpetuity, hopefully. Right. Yeah. But, um, it's a, it's a finite project, but you, you're um, it's important to be committed during that period of time. So you actually finish and get your ideas out. Mm. So that's um, you know, that's what we help people do that. But it's um, it's a, just really a joy to, be able to see your ideas come alive in a, in a very uh, targeted manner so that you're actually able to get, you know, your message out into the world where it can do its work. So, yeah. And that's, and that's what I hoped it was, it was, it's like a sales entrepreneur book, 
Yeah. Um, but, it was, but it's my story. I, it's yes. all based off of my story and like of course. The lessons that I learned. Yes. And like all the all the mistakes I made. Right. Um, and and like. How about all the money you happened. spent? How about all the money you spent on trying things that were like, oh, that I wish I had didn't all that. Work. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, that's the entrepreneurial journey, really, isn't yeah. it? You know, it is. We it is. we take a step and we make a mistake, and then we're like, oh, should I take another step? And then you do, and you just kind of. Um, you just kind of walk into a new life as an entrepreneur and it's uh it, it's challenging but it's it's exhilarating too and those of us who are entrepreneurs it's probably because we can't work for anybody else you know we yeah. want to have the freedoms that come with it which in includes like freedom of creativity and freedom to work every hour of the day and freedom to you know <laughs> to do pursue the projects and to pivot yeah when we when we find that necessary so absolutely uh, yeah so well i'd like to read your book so i hope you do get it out i i, I i'm going to get it out it's going to happen um i just i got to buckle down and get an editor because yeah. <laughs> i'm not well, an editor well, like, hey, you, you have to get somebody we edit. We're, i'm the best editor i know so you know <laughs> <laughs> well well nancy we're gonna have to connect so we're gonna have to connect yeah. um so what got you, what, 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 I guess, inspired the passion for you yeah. to start doing book editing and, and book publishing? Publishing and stuff. Well, um, it's, it was a weird journey, actually, Greg. I, I got here sideways. Um, I, my original career was in high tech. I was a systems engineer for IBM. Okay. And then I worked for Oracle Corporation as an application sales manager. And I was making a lot of money, multiple six figures. And I hated it every day of my life. And um, it just was so high pressure. You know, you work working with large corporations in the sales side of things. There's a lot of pressure, a lot of, you know, multi-million dollar quotas. And I don't know, it just, it, it nothing about it. I could do it and I was pretty successful, but it was not, it was so hard, you know, and I, there's so much efforting and, and so much nail biting and, and such. And um, I never could have left that because of the money. And, you know, I was funding college educations and stuff like that for my kids. And, but about um, in the early oh, 2000 area, um, my dad was diagnosed with a terminal brain tumor. And we knew that he would only live about seven months. So, and that was pretty classic textbook. So I quit everything. And I, my fo folks were living in Florida. So I went down to Florida to help them through that time and to stay with my mom for a little bit after my dad passed away. And when I came home, I was like, uh, first of all, that's the best way I could have ever used my time ever. It's the best thing I've ever done in my life is to just to be with my parents during that time. But I came home and I was like, at first I was a little freaked out. I was like, oh my gosh, now what am I going to do? I quit my job, you know? And then I was, then I had another thought and I was like, oh my gosh, I can do anything I want because I quit my job, you know? So I had always loved to write. And when I was young, I had things published. I was a total bookworm as a kid. And so I thought, well, you know, I, maybe I'll hone those writing skills a little bit. Yeah. So I was looking around, you know, for classes to take at in, you know, these undergraduate classes. I'm like, well, I've already done that. You know, I don't need to take those. I ended up going back to school and getting a master's degree in writing. I got an MFA in writing. And when I graduated, um, and those programs is like two years, you know, around the clock. So when I graduated, they actually asked me to join the faculty and to teach writing, which I did. And I also started the, the publishing house, Stonebrook Publishing at that time. I really was drawn to nonfiction. I mean, I really liked people's real stories and how did they get where they are and what did they do and what did they overcome and such. And so um, we started the publishing house and I had a couple of really good hits right out the shoot. The first book we published was written by a Holocaust survivor who'd gone to school with Anne Frank. And we ended up 
doing the book release at their school in Amsterdam. And it was so cool. Um, I'd never been there before. And in Am Amsterdam, the Nazis occupied, you know, the city all throughout the uh, 40 to 44 or 45 mm. um, till they, you know, till the war was over. And the only two things that were still left from that time that were still there now was the school and then across the street, the bookstore. And I was like, this is so cool. Well, we did it. They did a huge ceremony at the school for the 170 children that the Nazis had murdered. And then we went across the street and did the book release. And it was just, it was, it was an amazing experience. Then the next. I bet, I bet you that was just. Oh, it was. Well, the first of all, <laughs> it was there. amazing and surreal. So they're doing this ceremony and it's all in Dutch because that's what they speak, you know, in, in the Netherlands and stuff. But I felt like I was really part and that I was making a difference that what I had done for these, this author was making a difference. And we're using that book as being used in the education market as a companion to the diary of Anne Frank. Okay. So then the next book we published, we got back cover endorsements from Sir Paul McCartney and Cindy Crawford. And I was like, I, I, think I know what I'm doing because these people certainly wouldn't be lending their names to a product that is anyway, that was an, a, a whole amazing experience. Cause I've been in love with Paul McCartney my whole life. <laughs> anyway. Um, so, but the, the crux and the whole uh, reason for me wanting to publish nonfiction books is this is that we have a whole lot of problems in our world and we hardly know how to name them, much less solve them. But I honestly, truly believe that the answers are trapped inside of people like you. And that when you simply tell your story and what you've been through, what you've achieved, what you've overcome, what you've developed, et cetera, that you become the source of two things that people can't live without. And those two things are hope and help. And that when you simply tell your story, you can encourage people and help them along. And that's what I wanted our publishing house to do is to be, um, to publish works that would be, you know, helpful to other people. So, um, but there was a problem. We had those two great books, but then there was a problem. The manuscripts we were getting submitted to us for publishing were so poorly written we couldn't do anything with them but they had that seed of what we were looking for and i'm like oh my gosh should this be limited to just people who are know how to write and construct a you know a long form written project and i really felt like i was responsible for the stories that we got mm. and so i took a year off of the publishing, didn't publish anything for, for a year and wrote just a step by step by step by step by step process that takes people just from their idea all the way to the end game with the published book on the market, you know, as a product. And so, um, and that's what we've been, that's what I've been working on since then is helping just I, everyday people, you know, we work you know, your podcast is called Be the Difference. That's what all of these people want to do. They want to be the difference in somebody else's life. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, we've morphed a little bit in that um, you mentioned some of the stuff that we do with the book afterward that we can get into later. But if it's a crowded world out there, there are a lot of voices out there. How do you differentiate yourself? You have to find a way. Yeah. And writing a book is one of the best ways that you can do that. Cause I, I believe that if you want, you know, a bigger audience, you need a bigger platform. You have to have, you have to level up and engage in ways that you haven't done before. And writing a book will certainly help you launch into more of those avenues. Mm. No, I I'd agree. And mine started as a, I felt the necessity to launch my platform yeah, and, and really to, to podcast. 
uh, uh, speaking engagements, et cetera. Because mm -hmm. automatically, if you have a book, you're like seen as like, oh, well, they're, they're a subject matter expert on this topic that they wrote about. Well, so, yes, but only if the book is well done. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's a lot of there's some caveats to that, but you're right. When we have we've worked with a lot of people who wanted to be speakers, and one guy that I work with was already um, he was already doing some speaking, but once he got his book, he got booked for higher and higher and higher paying speaking engagements. Now, of course, he was good at what he did. It wasn't just about getting booked. It was about delivering on the promise of his message. But his book, uh, he was able to, excuse me, increase his speaking fees three times that first year just because the fact that he had this book and the, and the opportunities that it presented. Yeah. I, I think one of my fears, um, just to be candid and transparent, was... Um, it goes through it goes through the publishing process. It gets edited, uh, you know. It gets it gets the publishing. It gets printed, all that. And then what? Like, how do I market it? What if I can't market it? What if it doesn't sell? What if I'm like, oh, I got this book, and like no one buys it, right? And I got this fear, right? And so, uh, and I know, I know that's uh, what's holding. Well, me it's back it's it. valid. That's valid. Yeah. I think that's valid. So, I think that um, there's a lot of oh fears and hesitations and insecurities that usually come along with publishing a book. And once it's out there, it's you're there. It's a lot like standing naked in the public with your skin stripped off. You know, you're just, it's scary. We kind of have a way of working through that with you because when we work with authors, we do it in mastermind groups. So for the year that you're writing your book, You've been reading it to each other and we've been, you know, workshopping it and hashing it out. So you have a, a really good sense that your material is good. You feel very validated in, in, in your, um, in your material. And then you also have a group really cheering you on and all. So, but people, you know, you're like, what if I don't sell any? Well, some of my authors don't care about selling any of their books because they're doing what you mentioned well, let me put it this way. When we start, they say they don't care. At the end, they care. You know, they care a lot. But they're like, I want to use this as a tool to drive business back to me. And that's another very valid reason for doing it. But nobody's going to, you're not going to get rich off your book, especially yeah, your no. first book. You may not even make all your money back, but it can achieve other things that elevate you in other areas as well. Yeah. But, but um, it's, um, yeah, it, it's very vulnerable. It is very vulnerable. So it helps to have a kind of a team that's supporting you all the way through that and all. And there's a lot of ways to market books. I, I just, we don't do book marketing, but I partner with book marketers with my clients. And I got to tell you, one of the hottest ways to do it is by being a hot podcast guest for people to get your ideas out. And um, one of the things about marketing and it's any marketing is that you have to get outside of your own circle to reach new people. And you, that, which means, you know, you're going to exhaust your list of friends and family and they're going to all buy your book and you'll people do a few Facebook ads and all, but if you really want to launch, you need to have, other people's networks that you can um that you can connect with in order to do that so yeah. i'm sure yeah. you you find that with a lot of some of your guests even yeah i've had a lot of guests that come on that just are recent either they recently or they're about to launch a book and they're announcing yeah. it so. yeah yeah so you know writers write to be read so we want people to read our book and all but um there's no such thing as going viral or any of that stuff that just, you know, people, I don't even know why we talk about going viral anymore because your, your book won't. And we've set really realistic at, uh, um, expectations with our clients. So can I tell you a little bit about, about the process? Cause that will, yeah, yeah, definitely. I, definitely that, that, that could let me show you some of the opportunities at the other end. Um, so we always start off with, um, you know, but most people come to us with an idea. They haven't written anything. And a lot of times when people just sit down and write, unlike you, 
they write a bunch of stuff and it's all tangled up. They don't, can't, it just doesn't mesh. And by the way, while you have all this stuff rattling around in your head, once you start pouring it out on the paper, you're going to be so disappointed with what it looks like when it's on paper the first time, because it's just, you know, it, it, you can get it out and get it on paper. And then you like to, we like to massage it and edit it and all that kind of stuff. But we always start off with a series of foundational questions. And they're things like, and these are questions that help you crystallize your message. It's things like, you know, why are you even doing this? You know, what's your, your motivation? So some people, I want to be a speaker. I want to, you know, I want to, you know, draw more clients to me, et cetera. Um, who is your audience specifically? You want to be very specific about your audience. How are that, is that audience going to be changed as a result of taking in my material? So there's 12 of these questions and we end up distilling them down into a purpose statement for your book, which says the purpose of this book is to do this particular thing for this specific audience, period. You cannot put everything you know in a book. You can't do it. So you have to be very focused on what your purpose is, your message and your audience. And then because we have that statement, that's how you prioritize what does go in this book. And so um, we um, there's also another opportunity. So let's say it's because you're writing to a single audience and let's say and I've done it's let's say you're a financial planner. OK, you have a few audiences. You've got retirees. You've got people with kids coming up to college. You may have newly minted physicians who are not quite making a lot of money, but it's almost ready to pop for them. And so the, because of the way we construct your book, which I'll tell you about in a minute in these problem solution sets, you should be able to, you can write a series of books. You'll have your main structure and you're just changing the stories in the book and you can have kind of like chicken soup for the soul, you know, yeah. Yeah. you know, financial planning for retirees for, you know, newly married or, you know, those kind of things. But when we go to plan out your book, we plan everything out before you start writing. And the structure of your book is probably the most important part about it. It has to be something that you can follow and that your readers can logically follow and it flows from chapter to chapter. So what we do is what you said that you did in the first one, we map out your own personal story. You have to be present in your book. You know, it used to be that people books would like tell you what to do. And I guess people would do it, but nobody does that anymore. You know, you have to, you know, if they don't know you, they're not going to follow you. If they don't know you, they're not going to, to learn from whatever it is you have in your book. So you really want to, ex I was about to say we're to expose yourself, but I mean, open yourself up to your audience so that they can feel like they know you. Now you've done a fabulous job with that, Greg, through the podcast. We hear your voice. We, you know, we understand your intonation. That's what's called your voice. It's harder to do in a book, right? Mm -hmm. It's harder to do in the book because I can't hear you speaking and such, but that you still have to have your voice present throughout the book so that it sounds like you. So that when they hear you somewhere else and they read this, it's, oh, that's Greg. You know? yeah. So we map out your personal story. And then we concentrate on your chapters and where chapters are developed in problem solution sets. You name the problem that your audience has or is likely to have. And then through a very story driven methodology, you present your solutions. So your book. OK, so we're short attention span, high entertainment type people. Right. Your book has to be informational and Educational. educational and entertaining, yeah. entertaining. So how do we entertain? You just tell stories and it just, it's a flow of stories. And I tell people, you know, you write in scenes, you don't just dump information out. And, and we get to one part in our course and I tell people, okay, so we need to write set your book needs to be like 70% scenes and 30% summary. So that's, 70% where you're showing them something or telling the story and 30% where you're giving instruction. So um, anyway, so once we have constructed those book maps, 
and you ha it's like a, a it's a visual representation of everything that's going to be in your book kind of like a mind map and so you've got every point you're going to make every story you're going to tell every every you know lesson learned etc and so then you have these maps there's one for each chapter so that when you start to write there's nothing at all that even resembles writer's block writer's block is just sitting there thinking just kind of fiddle farting around and saying, Oh, I don't really know what I'm going to write today. And blah, blah, blah. You'll know it's on paper. And then you're got your butt in the seat and fingers on the keyboard. It's execution mode. And then you can pour out that first draft. So, um, and then we go through a lot of, you know, the thing that is so exciting to me is that our authors surprise themselves. They are so much better than they thought they ever could be just by learning some approaches and, and tactics and tools for writing. Basic structure. Yeah. Yeah. Not just that, but like when you're writing, when we get to the part where you're doing your first draft, that's where I put my professor hat on and I teach you how to write really compelling, creative nonfiction. And I don't care if you're writing a book on that has a bunch of numbers and, and all, or if you're explaining, you know, how to bake a cake. It, you're going to have fiction elements in your book because the whole point. Okay. So it's not really about the book. It's getting your message across to people. And if they don't read it, you won't have accomplished that. So we want to make sure that we make it entertaining enough so that they keep reading and reading and all along, you'll be dripping little stories in, you know, that are meaningful to you and to your audience. And you're going to really surprise yourself. I mean, some of the people who have come to me and have said, I don't really write it, run and write it myself. I just want a ghostwriter. And I'm like, no, you really uh, don't. I didn't, I didn't want to do that. I, I heard people be like, oh, it's got a ghostwriter. I'm like, eh, I am, you know, the, I mean, the I'm sure I am, I am kind of, I am anti ghostwriter. And I'll I'm tell anti ghostwriter you why. too. Because number one, you can do it yourself and you can do it so much better. A ghost written book is only going to be as good as the interview questions they ask you. They are not going to go deep into experiences that you've had like we will together to get these stories and this meaning out of it. And, you know, it's just I don't know. It's and this whole thing about AI and writing. You know, I wrote an article for our business journals about don't ever try to use AI to write your book, because number one, as business people, hopefully the foundation for your business is your integrity, number one, right. you know, and number two, I, I, anyway, there's a lot of reasons. You can't copyright anything that AI, I, AI writes because you didn't write it. It's not yours, you know? So anyway, there's a lot of, um, I have a lot of pushback on that. There's use, there are some good uses for it, but not for writing your book. But anyway, so okay. once we get your rough draft down, then I take you through some editing exercises that really make it shine and, at the end, you'll really surprise yourself with what you have accomplished and it's yours. I mean, you did it. And anyway, it's a, it's a, it's a very uh, iterative and small bite process. You know, it takes a year, but our clients are coaches and speakers and people who are experts and subject matter experts. And they, you know, nobody quits their job to write a book. So we, it, we chunk it in a way that you can get it done. Yeah, no, that makes sense. So my my book structure is I set it up into three sections. Each section is six chapters. And these three sections are three phases of my entrepreneurial journey. Oh, wow. That sounds great. And so yeah. basically when I was, the intro was when I was terrible. And well, um, we're all terrible. So. Yeah, when we start, yeah. And how I, all the mistakes I made. And then, um, my second, my second phase is when I started to get good and yeah. how I started to, you know, get, get my feet under me, uh, yeah. but still all the learning experiences I had and some stories and things I learned in specific situations. I was like, almost like, uh, serendipitous examples of like an example, like a, a situation would happen in a, yeah. in a home and I would, or in a sales situation, I would be like, Huh? Like, I'm gonna try that again, and then it would try it again, and it would work. I try it again, but like, but it was like the craziest story of something that happened. 
Uh, and then my last, my last is um, when I really started to take off and how I created my company. That's the fun part when you find your groove and you, you discover yeah. that I can do this one thing really well. So this is the thing I want to keep doing over and over and over again. And you get the, you don't have the distractions and you know, you, you kind of know what you've set in motion and want to continue that. So yeah. the other thing that's really, um, our clients really appreciate about our structure, Greg, is that when you're finished with your book, it can become this launch pad that allows you to deliver your message across multiple venues. And by that, I mean, you've constructed, let's say you have 12 chapters. Um, I'm just, that's not a magic number, just a thrown out number, but you are each. And what is a chapter? A chapter is a container for information. So you have 12 of these. And so why not repurpose that material for other revenue producing products like seminars or workshops or online training or, um, you know, you know, it, I've had several of my authors start podcasts about their their topic and, and use their book material for that. But yeah. I'm a, I, I have I am a big believer in two things and that. Number one is doing things the right right the first time. And that's what this process allows you to do. And the second is using what you've created to have the greatest impact. And you can slice and dice your material and your ideas to re reach. Because the thing is, everybody's not going to read a book. You know that. Yeah. So, But they're still in your audience. So why don't you meet your audience where they're already engaged through some of these other opportunities that you have to spread your message. No, you're, you're absolutely right. And, um, I could see almost like for my, the way that I wrote my book, I could almost have different speaking engagements. Oh yeah. In most of my chapters. Right. Right. So, well, and that's, and that's the thing too, about speakers. Um, I don't, I was part of the national speakers association for a long time and, one of the things that they're, they're so good. If any of your audience is thinking about speaking, just start going to those meetings. You'll enjoy them. But they speakers have, I mean, the big ones. I mean, I know some who have been like major speakers on worldwide stages. They have about three different presentations that they've really honed. And so you have opportunity in your book for each chapter to craft something from each one of those chapters, find the one that works and just keep doing that delivery. Over and over again. Yeah. yeah. Repetition is a beautiful thing. You get yeah. really good at something when you repeat it over and over again. That's true. And, and uh, you know, and it's like I said, that's where the magic happens as an entrepreneur. When you find that one thing that you can groove into and just keep being the difference for other people in that area. And we don't, I always tell people I can only do one thing very well and this is it. So I keep doing it. But that's, but that's where the magic happens, you know? Yeah. Um, there's some, there's some trainings that I've given so many times because I do a lot of sales coaching and training with different organizations on yeah. Zooms like that with people outside my organization, people within my organization, but I've given the training so many times I can do it with like my eyes closed. I can just yeah. do it in my sleep. But it's right? still personable every time you do it. Right? Yeah. But, and every time I feel like I get a little bit better. Like I, yeah. I add a yeah. little and bit. It's so extra. fun. Yeah. To yeah. leverage what you've already created. Yeah. And be able to to deliver it again and again. And I feel like it helps me with other deliveries of other things. Because as long as I can understand a subject, it's like I'm getting better just to, the, the, the practice of delivering information. As I'm getting so used right. to delivering stuff over and over again. So like, I, I feel like the podcast has helped me to speak a lot better. Oh, I'm sure being, it has because just being on, yeah. On podcast. Yeah. Um, and it's funny how your book will do that too. Cause I mean, almost without fail, my clients will say when they're finished, they're like everything from the email that I write to the grocery list is so much better now. And then they'll also say, cause I, I train them to look for things in their writing that makes it really passive. And they're like, sometimes they will send me something that forward me an email. Can you believe how bad this person writes? <laughs> I'm like, well, it, you're better. You're much better than you were. And they haven't written a book yet. So yeah. 
no surprise. That's it's true. fun though. It's so rewarding. And then it's over. It's a little bit no, but seriously, the, uh, the writing part, it's a little bit like going back to school to get an advanced degree. You're kind of your head's down and you're focused. You, and by about month 10 of 12, you're thinking you'll never get past it. And then why did I even start this? But then it's over. And then you start getting the reaction of people to your material. And it, it's just phenomenal. So your book should do three things for you. It should establish you as an expert. It should increase your credibility and it should help attract the following. Very nice. Very nice. So for, for like my example where I've already, I've already written, and I probably would want to write a little bit more because I think it's a little short, right? I want to get to like 40,000 words. Why? I don't know. Does it, does it matter? Oh gosh. I, I love this discussion. Okay. Whenever someone asks me how long their book should be, I have the same answer. And that is not one word longer than it needs to be. You tell your stuff and you get out. It's direct. And you can tell when people pad stuff. So um, anyway, but I so did, I didn't pad it. It felt complete when I completed it. Well, then it what did. do you want to add to it? <laughs> it felt complete because I sent it to their publisher and they were like, this is a little short. Like you probably want to add an extra like eight to 10,000 words to it. Well, I disagree with that because... Um, you know, number one, people's attention spans aren't as long as we would like them to be. And they're not, you know, I think you say what you need to say and you, then you stop. But a lot of people, so the part of my business that we help people write books is called the book professor. And we guarantee all of those authors that we will publish your book through Stonebrook Publishing because we know the structure and everything. We also publish a lot of other authors, nonfiction books. And so they come in through the publishing house and we we do the professional edit, you know, before we publish. There's an evaluation of the material that comes first to, to accept it or to follow our, uh, you know, or follow or to our say, like, hey, you should probably go back to the. Uh... Or to follow our suggestions to bring it up to publishing standards. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And then um, so we publish a lot of other nonfiction books, too, of people that we haven't worked with from the beginning. Yeah. And I'd love to have the opportunity to. Take a look I'll at send it. I'd love I'll to. I'll send it. Yeah. yeah. Well, but you know what? The, 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 thing, the thing is that you don't, you know, you want it, it. That's the hard step. The hard step is getting out of your hands and letting someone that has a professional eye give you feedback on it. Yeah. And when we do that, we only want to, we're only doing that to make your your material better and there are some things that i mean we have to protect our brand as well because we're we win a lot of book awards and stuff like that but that's where we want everybody to be and so we usually start off with a uh, what i call a manuscript review where we go through your manuscript just make notes all around oh you should maybe think about telling a story here or actually this part would go better in this chapter or, you know things like that that there's a couple of kinds of editing. One is just the line editing, just correcting stuff. The other is called developmental editing. And that has to do with the placement of the material within the book, you know, where everything fits in relation to the other elements and all. So we do all of that. So, okay. But for people who want to write a book, I'd like to start with them at the beginning with their just idea. So if someone wants, if someone's like, if someone is got an idea, they're like, you know what? I'd love to write a book, but I don't know where to start. What's the best place to start in terms of like connecting or reaching out to you? Uh, I, yeah. I said this, it's the, the website or. Yeah, that's the easiest place to go. It's called thebookprofessor.com. And at the top navigation, I think that first link is schedule a call with Nancy. And we would have a 30 minute just chat over Zoom because I like to you know, see people that I'm talking to and we'll just talk about your book ideas. And right. I do that a lot. Just help you vet ideas, give you some feedback on what you might be thinking. There's absolutely no obligation at all, but that take that step. I mean, it's fun and it don't be afraid. I'm not going to, I'm not going to make you write a book, you know, yeah. but I can tell you if you've got a good idea or what direction would make it better even. So yeah, that's, it's I mean, so it's, you, you never know. 
Yeah, so it's thebookprofessor.com and just the top navigation, you can schedule a call. And um, um, if someone was like me and they have a manuscript that they have not published yet. Yes. What would be the best way to get that to you? You know, you can just do the same thing. Same thing. <laughs> You'll get to me that way. Okay. Um, there's another avenue. You come through the Stonebrook website, but just let's all go to thebookprofessor.com and makes it easier. One, one place. Yeah. One yeah. place. I, I'll I have a different hat on, but you know, we have a whole different team and staff for each. They're actually separate entities, but you know, we're collaborative. Nice. Nice. I like that. Um, so, so Nancy, I appreciate you coming on and sharing everything. This has been fantastic and very enlightening for me because uh, I'll be sending you my book. Yeah. Manuscript. Here shortly. I'd love to see it. Um, I'm nice. I'm not. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm actually, I, I like criticism. I, yeah. It doesn't bother me at all. Oh, okay. um, um, the last question I ask all my guests yeah. is uh, you have the opportunity to uh, sit with, learn from, have a conversation with, break bread with three individuals, anyone in history that's alive or deceased, who are they and why? The first would be my favorite president, Abraham Lincoln. He's my favorite too. I'm kidding. Honest Abe. I got to tell you what, I don't know how he did what he did. And then he just, he's the only president during the war and then he was died days afterward. I just, you know, I don't know how he did that. Um, the second would be my grandfather, who I never met. He um, he died before I was born, and I know he had a really interesting life, and I just would like to get his perspective on it. Oh, and the third person, well, I would have to go back to my faith roots and want to meet Jesus Christ. Very nice, very nice. I, Abraham Lincoln's on my, on my list, too. He's awesome. He He's is amazing. awesome. He's just a fantastic. Um, oh, and, just, and depressed and, you know, had a crazy wife and poor guy, his kids died. I mean, it's just, I don't know how he did. a good person. I know. I know. He just persevered in all these, in the face of all these insurmountable odds and it did not change him. Plus he grew up in the woods for a long time without parents, you know, and just, uh, yeah. 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 Amazing person. Amazing person. Um, thank you so much, Nancy, for coming on the podcast. This has been a fantastic conversation and very enlightening as well. So thank you. Um, for those of you watching, you watch till now that obviously, or if you're listening, obviously you got some value. Do me a favor. Uh, the best thing that you can do is share this content with other people that can also get value from it because there's somebody out there that you know that wants to write a book. There's somebody out there you know that has an idea. There's somebody out there that's probably already starting and maybe need guidance. And this is the perfect opportunity to share this content so that they can, you can send them to Nancy and this is somebody that can help them to get their idea out to the world, right? So <clears throat> share this content. It takes 60 seconds to rate, review, subscribe, or share, but it means the world to both Nancy and I that you do that and it might mean the world to that person as well. This has been the Be The Difference podcast. I'm your host, Greg Birch. Until next time, we'll see you. Guys, take care.